Hey guys, this is Sonoff L1 light light strip. That's too many lights in a single sentence. But yeah, but this is a new product from Sonoff and you know what's gonna happen. First, we're gonna find out what is the difference between a light version and L1 version, which is already offered on the Sonoff website. I'm gonna include the links in the description for you as well, if you fancy it. And then, you guessed it, we're gonna take it apart, flash it with the motor and see if it works. That sounds like a great plan, so uh, let's get started with this. As I don't have some of L1 light strip, I had to refer back to some of websites to actually investigate the differences, and there are two. First of all, the version I've got, the light version, is not waterproof or weatherproof. And as such, it's lighter, much bendier, and easier to actually use that 3M tape to fix it to surfaces. If you ever use the heavier strips, you know that after some time they might actually uh, peel off and drop and they require extra fittings in order to stay in place. The second difference is the price. It's cheaper, which means it's more affordable. So if you're not planning on taking your LED strips outdoors, you might as well get the light version. The strip that Son of Sun made is 5 meters long and it's made of 50-50 RGB LEDs. These aren't addressable, so you won't be able to get fancy animations like you could with, for example, nail pixels. The LEDs are spaced about 2.5 centimeters from each other, which makes it about 40 of them in a meter. And you can cut uh, the LED strip to size every 10 centimeters, where you have a clear markings where it's allowed to cut the LED strip. But don't worry, we can make them all flash and change colors anyway, so it's gonna be fun. The LED strip runs on 12 volts uh, with a power brick included, and there is also this uh, kind of cheapo no, is that the tape? It is a tape. It's protective tape. I didn't remove it. It's time to remove the tape. Ha! So I've got the LED strip attached to my desk. It might not be a final destination, for the, but for the purpose of this video, it's going to be more than enough. Obviously, I've got the EV-Link app open, and you can see your familiar uh, light strip icon. So if you go inside, you'll probably expect to see a couple of options like color picker, brightness control, etc. Now, if you take a look, the uh, colors and brightnesses are quite responsive, so you can change the um, values uh, in an instance, even though they're connecting via EWLink um, servers. There is no uh, LAN controls, unfortunately, for this model, but maybe in the future that's going to be added. Now, other options include, obviously, a recent colors. So if you um, use some colors in the past, you can go back and uh, pick them again. There's the schedules and the timers, which are available to you. And color picker with a camera mode. So if you fancy that, you can just uh, point the camera at something and pick a different color. And also we have a, a different pre-selected modes which you can utilize to set different effects. Now, apart from having, uh, for example, like uh, predefined effects like strobe, you can control those and change different values according to uh, predefined settings in the app. Now, what's quite interesting and something that I did at the beginning of the video, I was actually using the music visualizer. Now, depending on the speed and the sensitivity, you'll be able to set LED controls with a microphone which is inside of the control box and create different scenarios. So if you lower, like I did, if you lower the response, uh, you'll notice that I can speak to the camera without triggering the LED so often, but they're gonna be very responsive in terms of claps and clicks. Now, if you change the options to make it super responsive and save these, you'll notice that they're gonna be very responsive to uh, whatever audio is around you, like right now. Fortunately, the enclosure isn't sealed, so you can easily pry it open and expose PCB. You'll notice there's a microphone and a USB 8285, which we're gonna flash with this motor because why not? Now, there are ironed and invisible dev pads on this side, but if you flip the PCB over, you'll find RX, TX, ground, and 3.3 volts. But unfortunately, the most important one, GPL00, is missing. So for that, I uh, downloaded some schematics for the ESP and found the GPL00, which we uh, then have to short in order to put the board into a flash mode. But don't worry, we don't have to solder the tiniest wire. So let's start soldering. 
start with extra ground connector visible on PCB as we're going to use this wire to actually show GPIO 0, 0. We then uh, solder the regular ground, uh, be quick, and then power 3.3 volts, and then RX and TX. Just uh, do it quick, don't overheat the pads so they would uh, be still attached to the PCB board. Then grab your FTD adapter of your choice and connect them according to this schematic. If you've done everything correctly, on power up you should see the blue LED lighting up. Now disconnect it again and then use the, in this case, a red wire connected to ground to shorten the second pin at the bottom of ESP from the right. You'll put that in a flash mode. You have to hold it down while someone else is plugging it for you because I don't have three hands. Now that uh, should result in a successful ESP flash via task motor. If you want more instructions about how to do it, I have them on the website. I linked in the article for you. It only takes a couple of moments and you'll be ready to actually go and send configuration, including your Wi-Fi address and module template, which is son of L1. Even though it's L1 Lite, it works just in the same way. Once flushed, just navigate to the address IP that uh, your test motor is going to connect to and you'll see that interface which allows you to control LED strips straight away. See, told you that was easy. You'll be pleased to know that even though we're using Node-RED, you still will be able to use controls from your infrared remote. Well, that's great. So this is the widget for Node-RED controls and they have everything that you need. You can set the colors, you can check the status of it, toggle it and set the brightness uh, via slider or predefined buttons. So this is a very simple controller and for the most part I actually took uh, my existing project for Nova Stella when I was playing with those lights in Node-RED and adapted it for some of light. So first thing I do is obviously get the status. Because I'm using MQTT, you have to specify the topics and uh, just a quick notice, I have my topics and prefixes swapped around because I prefer it that way. With that said, uh, that information is displayed on the uh, dashboard. So you can see I'm setting a label in here depending on whatever state it is and also saving that information to my flow uh, context. So I would always know uh, what is the light set to and use that information for different purposes. So if you want to make a toggle and uh, click on or off device etc and arrange the switch all you have to do is just to check information what is the power state of the device right now and apply the opposite state. Now if you want to play with color uh, set the color picker to HSV and you'll be able to use these values to apply them into a string and send it via MQTT to set uh, the strip into the right color. The same goes to brightness. Brightness only takes the number and all you have to remember that you're sending it to a specific topic and that way you can either use predefined values, some randomized values, etc. Now if you want to integrate this with home, uh, with home speakers or smart speakers, um, I have two integration, one using Alexa skill for uh, Amazon Echo integration and one uses Nora for Google Assistant. Now, for the most part, all you have to do is just register the device, add it to a list and deploy it and you'll see that in your ecosystem and use existing functions that will recognize the commands and set correct topics to handle your commands. So probably you'll have to just edit this uh, lines in here according to your needs and the rest leave it as is. Same goes for uh, Google Assistant commands. If you open it, you'll notice that this is slightly longer, but what you have to do is just change topics. Um, this is a little bit more complicated because the way a Google Assistant handled this, it requires information about the color and the dimmer. So I have to send two payloads to make sure that information is consistent. And if you're gonna use the widget, you'll notice that AO works quite well. That was super simple and now you can control the LEDs with voice assistants including Alexa and Google Home and obviously using MQTT or HTTP request thanks to the Smalltalk. So big thanks for Sonoff for sending me this. At least I could take a look and tell you all about it and if you are interested obviously in the description of this video you're gonna find a link uh, to the product itself and to the article which is gonna explain a little bit more uh, about Node-RED and to give you the project file so you could try it yourself. As for now guys, 
I do not have a posting schedule, but what I do know that there is another preview of a Sonoff product heading my way. I'm gonna have an early access to it, so if you're interested, well, there's only one way to find out. You have to follow me on one of the social media listed below or subscribe on YouTube or you know how it works. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you. I'm gonna say goodbye. See you later. Bye. Ha! So, so apart from, apart from, really, apart from the, mm, ap, really.